So, okay, I'll start with a different question. Who's looking forward to the day of the doctor? Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, okay, so a lot of people use Grunt. We'll move on. If you haven't used Grunt, uh, a Java, it's a JavaScript task runner. It allows you to automate loads of things. Um, and just basically the things that you don't want to continuously do manually. If you've got any sort of repetitive tasks that you need to do, optimizing images, anything like that, um, Grunt will help you out. So when I was just a young dev when I started out, um, I was completely oblivious to the idea of build scripts or, or any sort of optimization. I just thought that you wrote code and you just, you just FTP'd it up to the server and it's all fine. But I started working at agencies and they're just like, no, you have to like do all these things to, to your code. And um, you have to do them quite quickly. They normally want it done within an hour. So I asked some people, and they just said, well, there's some tools that you can use online. You know, um, Here's a Python script. Here's a bit of Java. Uh, if you want, you know, write some bash scripts. And OK, so I used these tools for a, for a long time. Um, that, the JS Lint tool, it, I was just constantly, I'd write <coughs> one little bit of JavaScript and then just smack it in there. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. That's fine. Leave that in. But <coughs> then I started learning about that there were actually always task runners. There were always things that could help us do our job uh, better and, uh, and more optimally. Um, Make has been around since like episode four, so that's quite a long time. Um, all, the, all, all the other rakes, they're kind of just like implementations of, of Make. Do it's written in Python, Apache Ant, yeah, all right. Um, I kind of took a liking to, to Make for a long time. And then when I saw Jake, which is like, Make with JavaScript. I, I, I sort of sort of started using that. Sometimes Jake files, though, they can get a little bit out of hand depending on what you really want to do with them. So I started work at a even larger agency, and Apache Ant was the favoured way of doing build scripts, and I couldn't figure out why. Well, eventually I. At first, I thought it was because it had the better logo. But eventually, I realized it was this guy's fault because um, he, released, he released HTML5 Boilerplate or was part of the team that helped release uh, HTML5 Boilerplate. And that was the, in the agency I was working at, that was the standard way of when we start a project, we start with the HTML5 Boilerplate. And what got released in 0 0.95 is build script in Ant. So then everyone just used it because it came, came free and no one had to really learn Ant because they'd taken care of a lot of the things that you had to do. It's fine. It's fine. I don't know if anyone's ever used Ant. This is what JS hinting in Ant is like. Um, yeah, that's XML. And nothing against XML, um, but I just look at this and everyone has the same reaction. It's just... <laughs> I don't want to have to, if I have to edit anything of this, I just, I feel, I feel like Wesley Crusher. So I never got along with Ant, and I started looking around for other tools. I would continue to use uh, bash scripts and, and little Ruby scripts I would maybe find on GitHub or something like that, if someone had written something. And then when, like, SAS and CoffeeScript, if you're into that, um, and preprocessors in general became popular, we started getting these nice GUI tools. Live Reload was my gateway drug to um, having a better workflow because you'd write some SAS, you'd hit save, it would reload your browser for you. As soon as you, if, you, if no one's ever used Live Reload or any kind of Live Reloading, as soon as you do that, you can never ever work on another project that doesn't have Live Reload. Um, it, really, it really is a gateway. Uh, Code kit's pretty good, you know. Prepros was was alright. It gave it gave Windows users a chance um, to experience a nice workflow for once. Um, yeah, these tools these tools were all good, but they had their problems. Um, the, the platform support, you know, they got better over time. Live Reload came out with an alpha for Windows that didn't really work. Um, a mixture's quite new. Like I said, Prepros was the only one, but none of them are really Linux-based. And sometimes I like to code in Ubuntu. 
uh, hold that against me. There was also a problem with config files. You know, there was no way to really share uh, a configuration set up for these. Um, CodeKit does have it, has a little CodeKit file, which is cool. I didn't know about that uh, a few months ago. And that's cool, but for the others, there isn't really a lot that you can share. And if you're working in a big team of eight, 10 developers, you want to be able to make sure that you guys are all set up the same and you're all compiling and, and doing everything else in the same way. And also, if you're, in a, if you're in a big team, if you work for a company, everyone's got to get it if you're going to start using it in your workflow. And some of them cost money. Preprocess is the only one that's free. Um, if you've got 100 devs in the company, that's, that, that could be a lot of money for, for the company to spend. So then Grunt came along, and it blew me away. Um, it was everything that I kind of wanted in a workflow, and even in the early days, it just completely made sense to me. Grunt runs everywhere that Node runs, and that's what's, that's what's really important, is that um, Node runs everywhere, so Grunt runs everywhere. I haven't got to worry about if, I'm, if I want to code in Linux. So this is um, installing Grunt. We install Grunt CLI globally. Um, this isn't the actual task runner. This is just the call to the task runner. You only ever have to do this once um, on your machine, and you, you have like the command Grunt globally that you can run anywhere. And after that, we just make our project, start our project, and we're going to create two files. One of these files is uh, package.json, if anyone's ever done any work with node, it would be quite familiar to you. Um, and the other one is the actual Grunt file. This is the configuration file that stays in your project and tells Grunt what to do. So the package JSON looks like this. Um, just a JSON file. It, doesn't, it, it can have as much metadata as you want in there. If you're publishing to NPM, NPM uses it and things like that. So when we want to install something like JSHint, we want to use JSHint with our project. Um, we run npm install. All Grunt plugins are held in npm, which is cool. Um, we do the dash dash save dev. And what that does for people who don't use it regularly, puts these little dev dependencies um, in there. With the, and eventually, for every Grunt plugin that you install, that gets written to that file. That way you're not passing around the node modules file uh, with all the plugins. You're just passing around this file. New developer comes on board, they run npm install, they get everything that they need to do everything that you're doing, including build tasks and things like that. <coughs> if you're gonna start using Grunt, you're gonna be typing npm install, dash dash save dev, Grunt, plugin name, a lot. Put a function for your shell. So uh, if you use bash, uh, there's a bash RC file. If you use something other than bash, you can use the equivalent. And all this does is that it, you now have GI and GCI everywhere. So you, um, there are two types of plugins for Grunt. There's the Grunt Contrib plugins, and these are plugins that are maintained by the Grunt core team. And then there's just normal Grunt plugins, and they follow the same sort of naming patterns, which is nice. So I can do this now, and when I want to install JS Hint, to my project, I can just do GI, JS hint, and it'll go out, it'll do it, and it'll save dev, it'll write it to my JSON file, and I've optimized my workflow a little bit more there. So this is what a grunt file, this is the basic boilerplate of a grunt file. It's uh, this uh, exported module, it's got two calls, it's got a, a grunt init config, and that's where we're gonna put all our tasks and what we want grunt to do. And the grunt register task is the call to, you basically just say, you know, this is the name of the task and eventually we'll assign it some tasks to actually do. So we're gonna load in the NPM module that we pulled down. And then uh, we're just gonna put our options in here. Already, whilst that isn't exactly the same thing as what we were doing in the AMP file, this looks a lot nicer to me. This makes a bit more sense. Um, we got the, uh, a couple of options here. If anyone has ever u not used uh, JSNRC files, they're just little files that sit in the root of your project, little dot files. 
and um, I like to use an external file because I know some people that I work with have their ID set to live lint. That's not the way I roll, but so some people do it. And underneath, like I said, we've got a task name and then a task list. This would just be an array of uh, lists uh, of tasks to run, referencing the stuff that's in the init config. So after I've installed Uglify, the same sort of way. Um, again, we're going to pass in the options and the sort of setup that Uglify has. Um, I still have less lines of code than the one JS hint thing that was in that XML. Just assign the uh, Uglify into our uh, task list. The register task default is that could be named anything you want, but it's basically what happens when you run grunt. You type grunt task name. Um, default just assigns it to the one grunt command. So there's a few things here you might notice. Um, grunt has, uh, grunt uses Lodash, which means it has access to the templating in Lodash. So we can assign a variable at the top of our grunt file called pkg or whatever you want. What that's doing is now it's going to pull in the JSON file I have for the package JSON. I can use any, um, anything from that, any named uh, key value from that. Um, and I can just insert it straight into the grunt file. Also, you've got the um, grunt template today if you're doing banners like every open, or most open source projects do banners. Um, you don't want to keep changing the date. That will just template the date in for you. And then I've got a reference to scripts. Um, again, I can just, at the top of the file, I can actually just write in all my scripts, where all my scripts are, what I might want to do something with in tasks. Globin is, or a file expansion, is a really cool part of Grunt. And once, once you really get into it, um, when you master Globin uh, to walk the file system and to pick out files and stuff like that, everything just becomes amazing. So for example, this one here is uh, the star star slash star is all JS files, including any sub subdirectories from that, from that assets path. So it will continue going through subdirectories if you have continuous subdirectories. And the one over here with the bang before it uh, negates the pattern match. So it just says, all right, okay, but if you find any .min.js files, just ignore those and don't do anything with those in this particular, in this, in this case. <coughs> so we're optimizing our workflow. We've already got Grunt up and running. Um, we, we might want to do something with this because maybe your average Grunt file will have 10 or 12 plugins. Like everything about Grunt is, is, is like a plugin ecosystem. And to do tasks there, you're going to want to use plugins. So if you have 10 or 12, you're just going to con continuously write Grunt, grunt load and NPM task, and you might need to update or maintain it. So we're working in Node. And we've got NPM. We have access to any NPM module we want. Um, so there's, this, uh, there's a match step. And what that does is it goes to our package JSON file. And in this case, it's going to filter through the dev dependencies, match anything that starts with grunt hyphen. And for each of those, just loop over them and uh, write load NPM task. So now we can just leave that in. And if, as long as we install a, uh, a plugin that starts with grunt hyphen, there are some that don't. Um, you can use this, and you never, ever have to write load NPM task again. So I grabbed some library off GitHub, uh, JavaScript library. They use Grunt. And I thought I'd just show you what it's like when you run um, uh, Grunt on it. So this is just running JS hint and uh, the Uglify task, and it's, it's, it's all right. It's, it's reasonably quick. Um, ran 378 lint and 78 files. Uh, Created a source map if people are into source maps. Uglify has that option you can pass to it. Created the minified file for me. And then actually even gave me some login readout, which things like Jake and, um, you know, they have login, but it's, it's not great. The grunt, I know, is improving login, but you can have, like, some nice messages in your command line, which is cool. So we've seen what a boilerplate grunt file looks like. Recently, I started changing the way 
I write grunt files because I started getting more confident and cocky, basically. Because um, it's just JavaScript, I wanted to write my config files like this. So I have this uh, big config function, function at the top, and then I have an uh, object that just has my task configs, and I can put everything I need to do with tasks in there. This also allows me to easily, quickly just copy and paste into a new projects and things like that. Um, then I call grunt init config on that object, register my task underneath, and then just export it out the end. For me, it's just like it looks a bit cleaner. Um, I don't know what their consensus is on that. So let's talk about grunt in general um, and why, why I really like it and why I think it's worth, if you're not using it, start, start at least investigating into using it. There's some open source projects that use it. There's quite a few. Um, this is good for a couple of reasons. One, it means that people who use these projects can see them on GitHub, can see their, their grunt files, can, can learn from them. Um, you can, you know, bugs get filed for grunt, features get requested, things like that, and it sort of drives grunt to move further. There's also about 50,000, probably more, GitHub projects that are using grunt. So we know that it, it's moving and people are starting to use it everywhere. This, this, is, this isn't an accurate number at all. It's probably closer to about 1,500 plugins for Grunt, and that's amazing. It, it, I don't think a day goes by that I don't hear or read or try out a new Grunt plugin. And not that they're all good, um, and not that they all work with the current version of Grunt, but you know, it, it sort of stimulates ideas and things like that. A couple of plugins that I couldn't like live without anymore. Um, Grunt Contrib Connect, or we'll just call it Connect for now, um, will start a HTTP Connect server in your directory that you run, that you have your Grunt running in. So if you're doing static sites or anything where you don't need um, much interaction with the server, you know this is this is perfect. And you you combine this up with something like Watch which can watch your files for changes, and when they change, it can live reload your browser. You've got like the perfect, uh, for, for me anyway, it's like the perfect workflow. And then you've got all the compilers for all the preprocessors. So um, when I'm sitting there doing my TypeScript that I do on a daily basis, um, no, I don't at all. Um, yeah, you, you've got, got your compilers. So you're now, now you're competing with those products that you're paying for. Because um, you've got live reload, you've got watch, and you've got your pre-compilers. Assemble is my new is my new favorite um, uh, grunt grunt task. Um, it will take handlebars templates and compile them. So if you're doing static site work, then it's perfect for that. Um, no more PHP includes or anything like that. Uh, it reloads when I change a handlebars template. I'm building a jQuery mobile app using Assemble just because uh, at build time I can build two versions. I can build a multi-page version and I can build a single page version. And I do that all in one command. And so I can quickly test which one is more optimal. Grunt embed, um, if you're creating conference websites, they're normally like one page. You wanna save yourself some HTTP requests, um, Grunt Embed will help you do that. It can take external style sheets and exter external scripts and just it will embed them on the page. You know, add that with something like um, Base64 encoding images and then you can have a conference web page that makes no external um, calls at all other than the first one. Responsive web design, just move on. No, apparently that's the thing. Um, you might want to do things like encoding videos or you know, uh, resizing images uh, to set yourself up for the next, the new source set syntax uh, for responsive images. These two grunt casts um, will, will help you out. Who likes uh, testing their JavaScript? Yes, come on. It's a thing, I'm telling you. Responsive web design is 2013 unit testers. Um, yeah, so Grunt Mocker, if you need to run some Mocker specs, 
It can fire up a headless PhantomJS browser. Um, you have to have PhantomJS installed. But this will run your test for you, um, and just you can go and get lunch or something. Casper uh, will, can do some functional testing for you. Again, it will use PhantomJS. Golf, it will do your functional tests. Uh, it can do screenshots of your functional tests if you, if you, if you want to do that. Uh, it's pretty cool. And break shots, if you are doing responsive web design, maybe your client says to you, oh, every time you do a build, can you just send us screenshots of the home page at 10 different viewport sizes? And you're just like, yeah, of course. I've got, got break shots. Uh, this will just do it for you, fire up a phantom, phantom uh, browser for you, resize the browser, take some screenshots, save them to a directory. If you want to build a nice little page for them to go on, uh, Grunt could probably help you out. So this is a little feature that I, I don't think a lot of people, I, don't, I never really see a lot of people use, but um, it used to come bundled with Grunt. It's now been separated. It's called Grunt Init. It's like project scaffolding. So if you've ever used Yeoman or anything like that, any sort of project scaffolding, it does that. It's, it's a bit more, I suppose, plain Jane. But it's pretty good. I use it for a lot of things. Um, there's a bunch of templates out there already. So in this case, um, I just installed Grunt in it. Go and grab the Grunt plugin template um, and install that. And then in a directory, I can just write Grunt in it template name. So if you work in a place where you have a standard template that you use for all your web apps or jQuery mobile apps, then just create one template and everyone can get, get rolling just that little bit faster. So yeah, so I'm just uh, installed a Grunt plugin. It does, it does some questions a bit like Yeoman again. If you want to fill them out, I don't. I just <coughs> smash enter a lot of times. Good thing about the, uh, the Grunt plugin ones are the ones that already exist. Um, they, they already come with working Grunt plugin. It comes with a working basic Grunt plugin. Comes with tests that are already passing, thank God. Um, and um, a, a bunch of other stuff, like your package JSON is already pre-filled and ready to install the modules that you need to uh, run, run the Grunt file. That, again, all, all, already comes with it. So when you give someone access uh, and a template to build a Grunt plugin really quickly, they're going to do it, right? So someone might write a Grunt plugin that sends you a text message um, when your build is complete. And so, yeah. If you wanted to, I don't know why. I know what you're thinking, though. Did he really just send a text message from a Grunt plugin? And yeah, I did. Um, Twilio, <laughs> it's not available. Uh, Twilio actually saw a video that I did of this and gave me uh, a promo code to give out. So if anyone's actually drawing on those things or writing on those things, write me a message, take a photo of it, and send it to me on a tweet. And I might think it's awesome. And, send you the, the promo code. It's for like £13.37, because they like that. Um, yeah. So you can see that Grunt is um, like a big config file. But it's JavaScript. You can also just, just write JavaScript if you want to write JavaScript in there. Um, a task, when you register the task, is just a function. And you can write anything you want in there. Uh, I mean, like you just write function, and then it can do whatever you want. You can have tasks that call tasks. So yeah, that's, if you look at some of the other grunt files out there, if you look at, I think Ghost has a really big grunt file. And in there, it has this thing called uh, multitasks. And it has just basically tasks that run other tasks. And you can run them in things like child processes. So you can have two grunt like servers running at the same time with live reload on different ports and things like that. So it's, it's quite liberating. It's, I'm now free to write what I want for my build process um, in the confidence that, that I can. It's consistent. You'll find that all the Grunt plugins um, have a consistent way of, of being built. So if you're using uh, JSHint, for example, and you have your setup for JSHint, and you want to switch over to something like Sprema, then it's, I mean, there is a little bit of change, but the way that the plugins have been almost forced to be set up, 
Um, they're just so similar. And you'll find it with everything. So you'll learn that, um, that you always put your destination before your source when you're compiling stuff. And that's really good. Um, excellent community. Like I said, so many plugins. Um, everyone's finding out new ways to, to use Grunt and uh, push it just that little bit further and start doing cool things. And it's, it's using Node. Um, so it makes it quite powerful because it can run anywhere a node can run. It makes it quite powerful. There's uh, a lot of talk of what's next for Grunt. And whilst it's not clear on the roadmap, I know 